Uh, now it is time for me to bring to the stage uh, an old rival of mine, uh, a man who uh, I owe so much to, uh, primarily my Prime Ministership. Um, a man whose uh, name is synonymous with the Rudd Gillard Rudd years. Uh, a man whose tie is uh, more red than your communist tablecloths tonight. Um, a man who uh, the Daily Telegraph once asked, does this guy ever shut up? <laughs> well, I suppose we're about to find out. Gentlemen and ladies, uh, please make welcome to the stage and Lenten, my old rival, Mr. Kevin Rudd. Thank you very much, Tony. And, uh, and uh, if I might just begin by expressing my sympathies to you, mate, for the events of September last. There can be no viler, no more disgraceful act of treachery in Australian political history than the assassination of a first-term Prime Minister in the middle of his first term. You weren't just assassinated, you were torn down. Leak after leak after leak was used to sabotage this government. I have never leaked, I have never condoned leaking. Leaking is the coward's way out. Tony, you were betrayed by someone whom you believed was a loyal deputy. For a loyal deputy to turn upon a Prime Minister with whom she, and it is always a she, <laughs> has done so much and gone through so much is an act of political bastardry for which we can never forgive. You lead your life in Christ's image just as Christ dined with the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the other sinners, so you have dined with Kathy Jackson and Gina Reinhardt. <laughs> Tony, now is the time to dig deep and find that most powerful of Christ's message, the message of forgiveness. I know how tempting it can be to seek out retribution and revenge, but Tony, trust me, if you do the noble thing, if you forgive and forget, if you retire and to the backbenches and give your new leader your unqualified support, just as I did, <laughs> you may yet come back. <laughs> In recent years and recent months, and it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when it happened, but let's just say it happened in June 2010, Australia has been engulfed in a toxic culture. A culture which holds in contempt our political history and conventions. It holds in contempt the Australian people. The cannibalism of first-term Prime Ministers, democratically elected by the Australian people. Tony, you were not elected by the faceless men of the Liberal Party. You were elected by the Australian people. If we allow this culture to continue unheeded, then Australia's reputation on the international stage will plummet and plummet and plummet. It is for these reasons Team Australia must, if not be disqualified indefinitely, be removed from the current front bench. <laughs> Alice Fraser, you mentioned Ban Ki-moon. Let me tell you, Ban Ki-moon is a friend of mine. We have worked together on literally thousands of occasions. 
And let me tell you, he is absolutely disgusted with this revolving door leadership that is currently engulfing the Australian people. The only thing which I can imagine would disgust him even more is your sordid invocation of his name to serve your petty political causes. Shame, Fraser, shame. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Australia is off course. The longer we are allowed to continue to compete in this great game we call global politics, the longer we will continue to cause harm, to foster sentiments of mistrust and insecurity. And until we can find a different leadership, perhaps a more experienced leadership, <laughs> perhaps someone who has seen the problem and the damage it can cause firsthand, we have no choice but to disqualify it. And having settled that, folks, I've got a zip. Thank you. Well, it's time for us to bring to the uh, lectern our final speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could you please make welcome to the stage uh, Mr Shane Hunter for the No Team. Thank you. It's great to be here. I, uh, yeah, fantastic turnout. Uh, it's, uh, this is the second largest uh, audience I've uh, spoken in front of since uh, uh, doing Reclaim Australia. I think it's very interesting how we uh, always recognise uh, the traditional owners of the land but they never get to have the land. <laughs> you know, it would be like if like one day you come home to your house and the door's locked and you look in and you just see me sitting in there eating a cereal and you're like, dude, what are you doing in my house? And I was like, well, I recognize that you're the traditional owner of your house, but it's mine now. So uh, enjoy the park. And, uh, and don't worry, every six months you get your own show on SBS. So, uh, you know, it all kind of balances out there. So, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm for Team Australia. The reason I think we should support Team Australia is we really need to defend our borders uh, from refugees. I think, uh, I mean, uh, queue jumpers. I think we really need to stop those queue jumpers, you know, coming here. Because there's a big difference between us culturally. That's just incompatible between Australians and uh, queue jumpers, boat people. And that is, they haven't watched season one to five of MasterChef. <laughs> and you just can't come in mid-season, mate. You just can't come in mid-season. You'll be asking questions, oh, why did Cheryl get voted out? Oh, it's just it's too much. In the prison, in the prison. So uh, again, Team Australia, thanks for that, defending us. You know, and, uh, and a lot of these boat people are Muslims. And uh, we all know Muslims are evil. Um, you know, like uh, a lot of Muslims, they want to come here and impose uh, their laws, Sharia law. They want to come here and impose their law on the native population. <laughs> and that's just un-Australian, mate, all right? And what, one of the great things about our political system is you get to vote with your dollars. Do you know what I mean? And like. Like, 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 think about how functional our system is. We have people like Clive Palmer, who had billboards without any kind of political message or rhetoric, other than just a billboard of himself, just smiling. And I think that's amazing that we can have that. Just, just like he had no message other than just that's the Clive Palmer party. He actually named the party after himself, and he got in. I think that's amazing. Essentially, we have a Pokemon in power that can only say his own name. And I think that's a, that's a, great, uh, that's a great thing about Australia, you know. Uh, Clive Palmer party, authorised by Clive Palmer for the Clive Palmer, Clive Palmer Initiative. <laughs> and the good thing about capitalism, in Australia we live in a capitalist society and I think that's great, do you know what I mean? Because, you know, more and more as we sell off public assets, we get to enjoy more and more advertising everywhere we go. You may have noticed more and more bus stops are covered with advertisement which is great that we're able to commodify your experience of waiting for the bus into something that can be traded on the stock market. I think that's fantastic. You know, we now have advertisement on the back of toilet doors that used to just be a, a door just covered with like penises and 
you know, Jono, cool Jono, like, which is fantastic. I look forward to capitalism continually uh, finding new and new markets everywhere we go, uh, new opportunities for advertisement. You know, you know, instead of glory holes, you know, you go there to, you know, have anonymous sex with a stranger. I think those days are past us. And really, the next time you kneel down at a glory hole, you know, we can have a Cornetto ice cream come through or a Coca-Cola straw, you know. There's just a lot of opportunities for potter's placement that are being wasted, I think, that we can look forward to in Australia. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, let's face it, essentially, uh, Australia uh, benefits from, uh, uh, from uh, put, pushing down the rest of the brownies in all other parts of the world. And, uh, and it's good because more and more we're able to um, export manufacturing to people that um, will accept uh, a cent an hour, which is great. And, um, and obviously we need wars to be able to make sure that happens, that there's poor people to, for their labour to be exploited. Uh, and, and what I think a, a Team Australia will actually provide people is eventually, now with drone strikes and drone technology, we can actually export um, uh, those jobs, just like we have in call centres, to our poor people that can actually pilot drone strikes and bomb themselves. I think that's a fantastic opportunity that would really save a lot of money. And the good thing is, if you don't like what I've said today, uh, your opinion really doesn't matter, because you're all poor. And uh, go fuck yourselves. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right, well, um, uh, gentlemen uh, and ladies, uh, we have heard from uh, all fighters on both sides of the argument. Now, uh, before our final summation for tonight, I wanted to remind you of the good work uh, my government did uh, when I was leader. Uh, when I was Prime Minister-elect, I got busy. I was out uh, backburning and driving the fire truck around. Um, and then when I became Prime Minister, I, uh, I got even busier. 2014 rolled along and uh, uh, we hosted the uh, T20 Summit in Brisbane, uh, uh, where I had the honour of meeting uh, all the economic minds of the world. Uh, Tupac Obama and um, the British leader James Cameron and uh, in fact that's one of his helicopters from a movie now um, and of course uh, uh, the leader of Canada. Uh, Canada. Uh, now uh, as I said before we rolled out the uh, National Band Broad Network. Uh, this was a wonderful network. Uh, don't worry about the previous government's fibre optical illusion network. Um, it was all a myth, it was all magic, and it was all science. And uh, uh, cannot be replicated in a controlled, independent church. Um, but it was uh, it's a fantastic copper. Uh, Sorry, I was buffering. Um, um, uh, now, of course, there was that. Um, we had to make the tough decisions. For you people, uh, there are some people who still believe the world is round. Um, it is not. Uh, there are some people who don't even realise that solar panels are stealing the sun's energy. That's less sunlight for beachgoers and swimmers and surfers and uh, members of Warringah. Um, uh, also, uh, we created, or we're about to create, one million new jobs. Uh, now granted, to create one million new jobs, we had to shed quite a lot of jobs uh, from out there. But you cannot make an omelette without breaking some other omelettes. Um, uh, that's, that's my opinion. Um, if you want to find out more, you can send my office a fax and uh, my women will get back to you. Now it's time for the uh, final 
summation for tonight. Um, we've got uh, people we've heard from both sides, um, the debaters and, uh, and the women ones as well. <laughs> uh, uh, we will bring up uh, to the stage, uh, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the captain of Team Yes, Michael Hing. Thank you, Tony. Uh, all right, so this is a moment where I sort of uh, run through what we've gone through tonight. Alice uh, came up and mostly complained about the terms of the debate. Uh, she was a real Lincoln Chafee, hey? No, that's fine. Uh, that's a uh, reference to the recent Democratic National Convention debate that happened in Las Vegas, and one of the guys complained about the rules. It's a good reference. Then she then implored us to think about Australian politics more like AFL and said, wouldn't it be better if um, Australian politics was appreciated more on the scale of the AFL? And I just don't think we can cope with that many sex scandals in our Australian politics. <laughs> we then followed up with uh, KMAC, who came up and said that white privilege is crack for entitlement, a very true statement. She also said that Tony Abbott makes my vagina close over. And never a more relevant debate statement was made, ladies and gentlemen. That's clearly very relevant. Uh, she also said that the captain was uh, on the most drugs and the trickle-down economics works, which was confusing because it was like we know it doesn't work, but it kind of did. Uh, but I, it was an analogy. Hmm? I'm on your team. She's on my team. All right. <laughs> And then we heard from one of these long-haired hippies, fascist hippies, uh, about Clive Palmer and dinosaurs. And the main argument for Carlos Sands seemed to be that we should embrace Team Australia because Clive Palmer had a park full of robot dinosaurs. And two things on that. Number one, we all love the idea of a park of robot dinosaurs, but none of us ever actually have visited the park of robot dinosaurs have. And if we truly valued it, I think we would spend more time there. The other thing is, I don't think the dinosaurs are actually robotic, are they? They just sort of, they're all oh, animatronic, but yeah, sorry, I'm not, yeah, I'm not making an animatronic versus robotic argument, but they didn't, didn't one of them get burnt down anyway? Rupert Murdoch did it. Rupert Murdoch, okay. They're claiming now that Rupert Murdoch burnt down Clive Palmer's animatronic. Who are you booing, madam? Oh, you're booing Murdoch, right, okay. <laughs> like, boo this actor. Well, oh, I'm done, no, it's fine. <laughs> Kevin Rudd implored Tony Abbott to be a better person. Again, very relevant. And finally, uh, Shane said that we can't relate. He, he implored the, he used the power of sarcasm to say that we can't relate to immigrants and that we should therefore um, uh, not let them in to Team Australia. Uh, Shane made a lot of very sarcastic points, which I think if you listen to the nuance of, really supported our case. So really, it's been a four-on-two debate. I really strongly suggest you support this motion that Team Australia should be disqualified. Cheers. Uh, now it's time for the advocate for the... Uh, no. Uh, uh, has the lights gone up or have we been here that long that dawn has broken? Uh, It's not Anzac Day, uh, you can turn them back down if you like. Um, all right. Um, uh, you've, you've heard from her before, uh, the female captain uh, for the no side, the uh, gentleman. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I haven't blacked out like that since I was surfing at Queenscliff. Uh, or North Stain or Piss Stain, I get them all mixed up now. Uh, but. Let's not drag it down to that level. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome to the stage, Electon, one more time, Alice Fraser. Thank you very much, Tony. As, as a woman, I do find it difficult to engage in political debate. Mainly, I just assume we have other people to represent our interests. <laughs> have a, a, a minister or something. Uh, in this debate, we watched Michael Hing argue that Team Australia stands for white power, which is a horrible thing to say about anything other than washing powder. Uh, Kirsty Mack argued that sexism, xenophobia and racism are performance-enhancing drugs, which uh, Michael Hing already rebutted for me. Good work. Uh, and Kevin Rudd, if that is your real name, 
took his valuable time on stage to either air some personal grievances or do base pandering to a biased audience, depending on whether we're pretending that these people are comedians in a wig or not. <laughs> Uh, which uh, brings me to uh, the main point of our argument. Uh, let's exclude Shane Hunter, otherwise known as the saboteur, uh, <laughs> from this argument. Uh, that part of the problem of modern discourse is we're not actually talking to the opposition, we're trying to disqualify them. Uh, we, we call them stupid and monstrous and meaningless, and really they are just people with different opinions. I think the real question of tonight's debate is not whether a Team Australia should be disqualified or whether Team Team Australia should be disqualified, should be disqualified. I think the real question should be whether the organising team of the Team Australia should be disqualified debate should be disqualified. <laughs> I feel from the outset that this debate has been rigged. They told us this was a debate. It's a pantomime. It's a pantomime with teams competing to be servile parasites regurgitating crowd-pleasing opinions to a well-worn audience who've heard it all before. Your open baby bird mouths were puking into them. Thank you. I feel that you've all agreed before the debate even began on your partisan opinion. Uh, you displayed the very closed-minded parochialism you purport to reject. And I've had enough. It's a wig. It's a wig. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right. Well, who wins? Who loses? It's time to announce uh, the winner. Uh, the winner for tonight is not any one team. The winner is both teams and all of you for coming here tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs>